worship experience. If you are within the house this morning or if you are joining us for a virtual experience, we are, have assembled here this morning to give God some glory, to give God some praise. If there are any praises or worshipers in the house this morning, why don't you go ahead and give God some praise because he didn't have to allow us to be here this morning, but he did. And since you're in the place and in this space this morning, why don't you go ahead and give God some praise. As I woke up this morning, there was a particular hymn in my heart. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. And God has allowed us to see some new mercies on this morning. And if you're just happy to be in the place one more time, why don't you just say thank you, Jesus? We're going to start off this morning with our worship experience. We're going to ask the music ministry lead us in worship, and then we will come with prayer, and then we will have rep, um, a word from Representative Michelle Rayner, who is in the house. I don't know if she remembers, but I used to work with her at the Public Defender's Office. Amen. But we are glad to have her in the place and in the space this morning. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth.
Praise the Lord, everybody. He's a mighty good God, and he is worthy to be praised. Let us go before the throne of grace and mercy. Most gracious and heavenly Father God, we come to you this morning. God, we come this morning saying thank you. We come saying thank you, God, because you are a mighty good God. And because you're a mighty good God, God, you are worthy to be praised. And so, God, we, your people, have assembled in the house to, this morning, God, to worship your holy name, to, to say thank you, God, simply for who you are. God, we thank you, God, for being our redeemer, God. We thank you for being, God, our savior. God, we thank you for waking us up this morning, God, to see a brand new day, God, that we have never seen before. And certainly, God, if it was based on what we have done, God, we wouldn't deserve to see it, God. But you allowed us to see it, God, through your grace and your mercy, God. We are not going to be in grace this morning, God, but we are going to come and assemble in this house of worship and praise to praise your holy name, to say thank you, Jesus, God, to ha shout hallelujah, God. We're not going to the let the rocks cry out for us this morning, God. We say thank you. God, we thank you, God, for every single person that is sitting in the pews, God, and is joining us, God, virtually. We thank you, God, for where we are right now in our very lives. God, we come realizing that some of us come burdened down, God, but we still come to you, God. We realize, God, that some come with shoulders drooped and with tears in our eyes, God, but we're still coming to you, God. We come realizing that some are coming in the experience of sickness and grief, God, but we're still coming to you, God, because you have all power in your hands. And we know, God, that even in the midst of whatever we are in, God, that you have allowed it to happen. And if you got it to the place, God, that you promised in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, we come on bended knees this morning, still lifting up with our hearts to you, God, saying, thank you, Jesus. God, we invite you into this worship experience, God. We pray right now that you would have your way, God. Have your way, God have your way in this experience, God. Move from person to person, God. Pew to pew, God. Heart to heart, God. We lift up the Reverend Clarence Green, God, on this day, who will bring the word, God, who you have already saturated with the word for the today, God. We pray, God, that you would touch every single heart to receive the word, God. We pray, God, that you would just come and dwell with us. God, we need you today. God, we need you, God, in our lives. We need you for our family's sake, God. We need you to saturate our houses, God. We need you to saturate your churches, God, so that we may be the churches, God, that walk into the world and touch the world, God, so that people may know who you are in your beloved son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for our sins. Now, God, we just pray that you would move in this place. Have your way in this worship experience. God, touch every heart, God. Touch the word of God that shall come forth, God, that it may come forth with clarity and with understanding so that when we leave this place, God, we know that we've heard from you and we've been in touch with you. And then, God, when we exit the doors, God, help us to walk in a manner that is holy and pleasing unto you. God, these and other blessings we ask in the name of your darling son, Jesus the Christ, we pray, and we say amen, amen, amen and amen.
you may let them in at this time. At this time, we're going to ask that Representative Michelle Rayner Goosby come and give us a word. We know that Voting Tuesday is coming up, and it is oh so important that we get out to vote. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise. Come on, see, I grew up in the Church of God in Christ. So when we come into the house, come on, give him a hand clap of praise. I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. See, that's why you shouldn't give nobody like me a mic. Woo, I feel my help. God, we thank you. So I have been here before. I am State Representative Michelle Rayner. I uh, am kind of related to Pastor Price. His sister-in-law is my sorority sister. She's actually my line sister, so she's right in front of me. She's number six and I'm number seven. So we are kind of like family and I'm so grateful that he always opens up his church and his pulpit to me. But as it has been said, voting time is now. It is happening now. If you have not voted, you can vote today till about, I believe, six o'clock today. And if you like, are you an election day purist and you like to go in on election day, you can vote on Tuesday. And guess what? If you live in this area, I am on your ballot. So I'm going to ask you for your vote, but I'm going to tell you why I'm going to ask you for your vote. Because there's a lot of folks that are going to be on this ballot. And in all that getting, we need to get understanding. We need to do our research. Because as I was sharing at another church, we talk about, you know, spiritual wickedness in high places. But that manifests in the government. That manifests in policies. That manifests in laws. So when we're looking at at the people that we need to support and we're looking at the people that we want to go and advocate on our behalf we got to understand what's going on people are like oh well, Ron DeSantis is doing this and doing that we understand for spiritual people we understand that there is a bigger plan than that and so it is incumbent upon us as people of God to exercise our duty and to vote to exercise our duty and to be the church, to be the church when we vote and we do our research. And so I, again, will be on your ballot and you, some of you may have voted for me and if you haven't, that's okay as well. But I would ask for your vote. I am a civil rights attorney. I've worked at the public defender's office. Um, I work with Ben Crump. But when I'm in Tallahassee, I believe that too much is given, much is required. And I believe that it is incumbent upon me to speak truth to power. It is incumbent upon me not to just sit down, to get along and go along and all those things. But if God has put me in that place, for however long he has put me in that place, I'm going to carry out the assignment that he has given me. And that is why when I go to Tallahassee, that is what I do. I don't play patty cake with the Republicans, but I still get things done. I don't lay down for them, but I still get things done because God has put me there for a reason. God has given me the voice to be able to speak. And until he says I am done, that is the assignment that I am on. And that's the assignment now since our district has come over to Progress Village. That's the assignment that I want to be on with y'all as well. That's what I do in St. Pete. So this is not something you won't, y'all see me probably once or twice a month because that's what I do when I'm in my district. And now since this is a part of the district, we're on assignment together because I can't do this alone. And you know, we sing that song in church that we're all part of God's family. Well, we all part of this family now as well. And so I appreciate the time. I appreciate you listening to me. I also appreciate the work that you do in this community because I remember the back to school drive and I know where people are struggling, how that is blessing folks. So y'all are doing the work and I appreciate it. And I thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Representative Rayner. Now we know you're on your, um, on your rounds, so it's okay if you leave, we appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by and wish you will as you go on to your other churches and visit. Today I stand before you to give you the scripture. Scripture will be coming from Revelation, the second chapter. My preference in reading is the New Living Translation. So I'll be reading from that version. Revelation, the second chapter. Be reading through the first 
the first of the seven verses, New Living Translation, and it reads, write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and on and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evil deeds of the Nicolaitans just as I do. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, I will give fruit from the tree of life in the paradise of God. Revelation 2nd chapter, the first through the seventh verse, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I will have a selection by the choir, and the next verse you'll hear will be the man of God, Reverend Clemens.
teach me because she loves social media. She loves looking through all the things and I'm not one that goes through social media. I don't even really look at news unless it's about sports. But she keeps me updated. So yesterday while we was sitting down and eating, she didn't know I was picking her brain. So she was telling me about things that's been going on in the news and it's real dear to me I mean, I know about it, but do I really want to see it on TV and do I really want to read it in the newspapers and do all that stuff? But the first thing that comes to me right now is we had a vice president and what she was telling me, they questioned her about what a woman or a female or however you want to put it, but yet she couldn't even answer the question because she said she was not a scientist. You know, schools, they're battling about which books they're gonna let our kids read and things that are gonna be taught to our children. But yet, where do we stand? What are we doing? Are we, as Christians, fighting the fight? Yeah, we do a lot of things in the community. But where are the voices that are fighting for our youth? Now, I'm 51 years old. Lord knows I know what a woman is. But in case our vice president needs to know, I want someone to send her this tape. A woman is one that reproduces. A woman is one that loves and nurtures. So with all that being said, I'm going to get into our scripture this morning. Revelations, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. Now, it reads as, write these letters to the angels of the church of Ephesians. This is the message from the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand 
the one who walks among the seven lampstands. Now the seven stars represents the seven angels. The seven golden lampstands represents the churches. And then as we go down into verse two, it says, I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard works and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who have said they are apostles, but are not. You have discovered they are liars. Now, here we do good works. We are patient, and we have endured a whole lot in this world. They're trying to take away a whole lot of things and just change and make their truth our truth. But are we, as Christians, going to stand up to what we know is true? Are we going to let them take away our love for what we have always been doing? No. See, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to it. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to rush myself. I'm not going to rush myself. See, we know when a lie is a lie. But are we going to stand up and call a lie a lie? Are we going to let them tell us what our truth is? See, they can't come back and define our truth. They can't come here and change our truth. Be it whatever it is you desire to be, to do what you want to do. But still hold on to what is true. You can't change the gender of who I am or what I am or the way I am. It is how it is. Now, as we go down into verse 3, it says, you have patiently suffered for me without quitting. But down in verse 4, he says, but I, but I have this complaint against you. This complaint against you. Do you want to go and get to those gates and hear the Lord says, I have this complaint against you? Or do you want to get to the gates and hear the Lord says, my boy, my son, my daughter, well done. See, you can't wait to have this complaint to come against you. But he says, you do not love me or each other as you did at first. He says, you do not love me or each other as you did at first. So it's, it's not that you don't love us. It's not that we don't love each other. It's not that we have just given up on each other and walked away. What it is is we don't love like we used to love. We don't carry like we used to carry. We don't care for like we used to care for. We don't watch out for each other like we used to watch out for each other. See, we got to a point when it ain't hurting me, so why should I worry about it? Why should you worry about it? I'm glad I asked myself the question. See, we should worry about it because we're losing the love for one another that we should always have had. When my sister fall or my brother fall, you should feel the fall too. We got to get back to that love that we first had. We got to care for one another. We got to lean that shoulder out to one another. Yes. See, there's somebody, somebody might be even sitting here wondering, where am I going to get this money from for this light bill? Somebody might be sitting in here wondering, how am I going to get some gas money to get to work in the morning? Uh -huh. See, these are the little things that we're worried about right now. But see, we don't take care of each other no more. Yeah. And there's somebody might be sitting in this church that got a phone call from a brother or sister that said, man, I ain't got no money but I ain't got no food to get my children tonight. 
But all you can do is just say, I'm going to pray for you. But see, there it takes a little love that we got to step out. That sometimes it might be your last. But just guess what? You got to share your last with somebody that don't got it. See, when are we going to step back and start loving like we used to? When are we going to go back and start doing what we used to? Taking care of one another. Loving one another. Helping someone see their way through. We don't love like we used to. As I go on and read in verse 5, it says, Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. Right there. Right there. There's your first lesson into loving like we used to. We got to turn back. We got to go back to doing what we used to do. We got to go back to being who we used to be. We can't go back and let somebody else write about what we used to be and how we used to be. We got to not let that be history and let that be for our forever present. We got to keep on pressing forward to the mark. And we got to keep on pushing and guiding and delivering and nurturing and caring for our young, caring for one another. We got to love like we used to love. We got to care like we used to care. It's all about first repenting. See, when you repent, matter of fact, let me, I'm going I'm to put it to you this way. A lot of things, it, it started way back when. Way back when. See, when I was in school, we used to have the pledges of, Pledge of Allegiance, Star and Bangor Banner, and prayer. <laughs> but check out, way back then, it started right then and there when they took prayer out of the school. See, we stopped praying and caring for each other back then. See, we didn't, we didn't, they didn't, they didn't stand up and fight for what they believed in. See, we, 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 it's, 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 it's real. So we say that, I don't have a Bible with me, but we say the, my, it's in my phone. That's our armor. And if it's your armor, why don't you stand behind your armor? Why don't you put on your shield and stand up? Why do you want to stop praying in the church? Because somebody somewhere didn't feel that they wanted it. So guess what? Just as this representative this morning stood up and said, see, it's some wicked things going on at the top. And see, we can't let the top define us. Because see, if you think about that top, there's an even higher top that I know of. See, I know a God that sits high and he looks low. I know a God that cares about me even when I'm not doing right. See, that's mercy. And it takes mercy. It does not matter what you've been through. It does not matter where you're at. It does not matter what you're doing. But all you gotta do is us as Christians, brothers and sisters, is stand in the gap for somebody. Somebody is gonna have to repent and change all because of you. All because of what you did because you stood in the gap. When you stand in the gap, you're loving that person. You're showing direction. It does not matter what they're doing. They could be strung out on them drugs, but you're standing there, you're standing in the gap. You're delivering them. You're giving them the one and mighty thing, and that's Jesus Christ. And as long as you're spreading the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ in this kingdom, repentance is on the way. You might not see the change. You may not even be here for the change. But don't let this world define what your children or your grandchildren are going to be. The direction that they got to go. We have to define this direction. We have to stand in the gap. But let me carry on. But this is in your favor. See, there goes that mercy. Because this is in your favor. It says... You hate the evil deeds of the Nickelodeons, Nickelodeons, 
just as I do. In other words, we don't like what's going on. But we, as a world, as people, we're accepting it. Whether you're accepting it by saying it's okay, or you're accepting it by just being quiet, but it's acceptance. No matter how you look at it, no matter what it is, it is acceptance. You know, first thing and foremost, same-sex marriages. It's love that is going to help one repent. See, first of all, let me, let me explain this to you. I'm, I'm going to give it to you like this. Because I, I don't want to confuse anybody. And I don't want to think nobody taking it the wrong way. It is not the person that you should be against. It is not the person. See, what it is, it's the deed. But if you love that person as a human and, and, and see them person as a human, you can still give them Jesus. Now, once you give them Jesus, see, repentance is right behind. See, it's right on the way. So we got to go back to doing what we used to do. We got to go back into spreading the word of God and letting them know that Jesus Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus Christ went to Calvary for you and me. He died on that cross. So think about it. Look, look at it like this. When, when I first started, I said I was gonna do um, I was gonna do rooted. So I decided not to do rooted. I really didn't decide. It was just that conversation me and my wife had yesterday. Everything got changed. But so when you're rooted. Think of a flower, right? No, no, I don't even do a flower. You don't went to Home Depot, you don't bought all these plants like my wife had me do, and then you planted them. But then you said, I had to buy some good soil. See, so then you bought good soil. You spread the good soil amongst these new plants that you put in there. Now, Look at it like this, and then, then I'm going I'm, I'm to take a seat after one more point. So you take this flower, you plant it, you don't like it, you pull it up, and at the end of it, you see all the roots, right? So you don't end up liking this plant because you didn't provide for the plant. You might have gave the plant some good soil, but you forgot to nurture because you didn't water. See, see, when you water and you go out and you care for and you prune, and, and, and then you get to the point of you're getting a live, flourishing plant. So, and if we looked at our Christian family, our children, and decided to say, hey, we're going to nurture. We're going to give them some good soil. So, but the good soil is not just that dirt. It's the word of Jesus. See, so when you start spreading that good soil, and you then, you put that good soil down. And as you put the good soil down, and you just can't stop right there. So you got to water that plant. You got to go out and tend to it. So you got all the brown leaves that came with you when you brought the plant. Now you got to cut off those brown leaves. See, and as you're cutting off the, those brown leaves, see, you're cutting off sin out of their lives. Because you're getting there and you're trying to prune them up and bring everything up to the way that it ought to be. So then when they do step out, they know right back to where to come to. So we have to nurture. We have to love. We got to provide for them. We got to give them what they need. Now, I'm going to go all the way down to... Verse 7. No, I'm not going to go to verse 7. I'm going to go to where it says, I will come and remove your lampstands from its place among the churches. But this is in your favor. You hate the evildoers. Now in verse 7 it says, anyone, that ear, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what it is saying to the churches. So now, what I'm stopped by to tell you, see, the lampstands is the churches. But a lampstand provides light. Yeah. So now, yeah. if you can't understand what I'm saying right now, then 
please pick it up right here. You need to provide this nourishment to keep your lampstand lit. See, if you, want, if you don't want your lampstand to be lit, you go ahead and move on and keep carrying on with what you're doing. But God says, God says, I will remove the lampstands from amongst you. In other words, I will turn out your light and you shall forever walk in darkness. Now, so if you don't want to walk in darkness, here's your chance to repent and redo and renew your life right now. But we got to stand up to what's being said. We got to stand up to what's being done. We got to stand up and build and nurture and get back to what we was doing first. I'm not saying that we don't love him. I'm not saying that we don't love each other. But somewhere, our love has grown stale. So what is it that you're going to do? Would you invite that first person to this feast? Somebody you know? What is it that you're going to do? Would you first invite yourself to turn back to be in love with Jesus as you first did? Can you remember the first time? Can you remember when you was lost and you turned and you had this, this fever, this fire, this love, this, this earning that you wanted to be? You wanted to be in his arms. And now this is my last thing and I'm gonna step out and I'm gone. I know we all know the story. I ain't even gonna tell you where to find it at in the Bible. But it was a father and two sons. One son asked for everything and went about his business. The other son stayed. Now, the son that took everything went out and he messed up. See, that's like all of us. We have all went out and we have messed up. But this one son decided to say, you know what? I'm tired of sitting down here eating with the pigs. So I'm going back home. And um, you serve a father that is forever standing on his porch looking out and waiting on for you to come home. You serve a father that is sitting there searching for his lost son. So now, I'm telling you, you have a father that is sitting there with open arms waiting on you to come home. Waiting on you to come home. But there's one thing that we do not preach about this lesson. As that one son comes home, the other son that has been home all the time grows jealous. He grew jealous and he got mixed up and he became lost. But the father, it never tells us in the story that the father went back out to get that one son. So what I'm saying is, as you lose one, don't forget about the others. Go back. You have to remember that you have to love all. We got to protect all. We got to give it to all. We got to sit out there and we got to stretch our arms wide and open up our hearts to everybody and anybody because it is about us repenting and redoing. We got to go back and go back and get that love. What are you going to do? back to our first love, how we need to go back to how we used to be when we accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior. We were too busy trying to love people that we didn't have enough time to judge them for what we thought they were doing wrong. 
I was just asking you to tell the truth about a fruit that bears, but it ain't my job to tell that truth what it is. The tree knows. And God knows. It's our job to love, to nourish, to seek those which are lost. And so today, I stand before you offering an invitation for discipleship. Maybe you don't know God in that love. You don't know God to be the redeemer, to, to be standing on the porch waiting for you to come back to be saved. But I offer that God to you today. Or maybe you are saved and you know who God is, but you've fallen away from your church family. And you want to come back and renew your relationship with God. You are welcome. Even more so, maybe you just want to be a, a member of this church. We would love to have you. We'd love to walk this walk with you, to talk this talk with you, to encourage you along the way. Or maybe you just need prayer. Whatever your need is, please. Please come. Sister Kay Fleming is heading that um, that work. You can order your t-shirts. You can order your t-shirts uh, here in church today or online. Um, I think we have a link for that, Brother Joy sent it out, but we'll, if it's not out already, we'll send it out on Tuesday. Anybody who's interested, please see Miss Kay Fleming, uh, and she can help you out with that. If you're interested in supporting um, uh, family and friends, helping her plan that, please see her. It's not easy planning programs. It's not easy planning events. And she's talking about having fun and food and all of that. You need people to cook the food, people to prepare um, for everything when everybody gets outside to clean up, all of that. Let's pitch in because it's our family and friends day and make it all great. One important thing I really don't want to forget. Today is souls to the polls. Souls to the polls. All right. 
I had it in my phone, the address is there, but my phone is over there, so I don't remember it. But it's gonna be at a local library here in Tampa, Florida. They're meeting up at 12, and as representatives said earlier, they'll be there till about six, early voting till six. You don't know what's gonna happen on Tuesday. If it's your intention to vote, why not go today? When the lines are shorter, you can get right in and get out. Thank you. The address is C. Blythe, well, C. Blythe Andrews Library, 2607 East Dr. Martin Luther King Drive, Junior Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33610. Again, C. Blythe Andrews Library, 2607 East Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Tampa, Florida, 33610. Let's do our civic duty. If you don't like what's happening, let's vote to make some changes. Any other comments? Yep. Good morning. Um, next Sunday is the Youth Sunday. Um, we're soliciting prayers for Reverend Marquita Killen, Sanaya, her daughter had a seizure this morning. Amen. So please pray for her. She wanted me to make a couple of announcements in relation to next Sunday and the Youth Sunday. She's asking that all youth wear purple short shirts and jeans and she's encouraging all of the congregation to come out and support. If there are any other youth who would like to usher next Sunday, please see me after church or Miss Kinsler as well. Please stand. We're gonna ask Reverend Green to come and give us our benediction. Hey y'all, guess what? Last time I was up there, I cried. This time I didn't cry, and this was still very dear and near to me. But um, I thank God and the Holy Spirit for holding me. Thank you, Lord. Revive our hearts. Now let's do the benediction and the doxology.